Hello, good morning. This is our lecture for a cellular infectious agent, again for Biology 120 Microbiology. Learning outcomes for this lecture are the following. Differentiate viruses in terms of host and genetic material. Describe the importance of viroids, prions, and virusoids. And discuss the impacts of viruses in human advancement and evolution. Viruses occur universally, but they can only be detected indirectly. So although they are well known for causing disease, please take note that most viruses coexist peacefully with their hosts. Virology is the study of viruses and subviral particles. So when you talk about virus, we define them as genetic element that can replicate only inside a living cell or what we refer to as the host cell. They are not considered living entities and they rely on the host cell for their energy, for their metabolic intermediates, their protein synthesis. So sometimes they are re uh, referred to as an obligate intracellular parasite. Viruses possess their own genomes, and in this sense, they are independent of the host genome. However, they don't, uh, we don't normally uh, tag them as growing, no? so they do not grow, but instead, they do replicate. Okay, so let's now uh, go to the historical account in the science of virology. This is now the discovery of viruses. This is paying homage to the people who made virology a surviving and successful science. Okay, let's start with Dmitry Ivanovsky. In 1992, he was able to show that the causal agent of a mosaic disease of tobacco plants, you know, this particular disease in um, tobacco plants, manifests as a discoloration of the leaf, you know, uh, as shown in this particular figure. He, he showed you know, that this disease, or the causative agent of this disease, passed through a bacteria-proof filter. So it's smaller than bacteria. You know? So uh, he said that it could not be seen nor cultivated. You know? However, uh, Iwanowski was not so convinced you know, with uh, his findings so uh, uh, Beijing in 1898 tried to repeat this experiment of Iwanowski no? and uh, his results convinced uh, and uh, represented no, a new form of infectious agent which he termed then as contagium vivum fluidum. No? So this is what we know now as the virus. In 1898, Loeffler and Frosch came to the same conclusion regarding the cause of foot and mouth disease. Because foot and mouth disease could be passed from animal to animal with great dilution at each passage, the causative agent had to be reproducing and thus could not be a bacterial toxin. So here, this is the start of uh, animal virus discovery. And then in 1908, Ellerman and Bang, uh, these guys reported the cell-free transmission of chicken leukemia, which is uh, attributed to viruses. And uh, by 1911, Ross discovered that uh, solid tumors of chickens could be transmitted by cell-free filtrates. So these were the first indications that some viruses can cause cancer. Now, so this is also the birth of the so-called tumor virology as a subdiscipline of virology. In 1915, Twerth uh, trying to culture the smallpox agent on agar plates but the only growth that he obtained was that of some contaminating micrococci. No? So uh, uh, upon prolonged incubation, some of the colonies stuck on a glassy uh, 
uh, took on a glassy appearance. And uh, once this occurred, he noticed that no bacteria could be subcultured from those affected colonies. So he also uh, added you know, that this glassy material was first passed through very fine filters, uh, which suggested the existence of bacterial viruses. So now we have your plant viruses, then the animal viruses, and now we have the bacterial viruses. In 1917, uh, D. Herrell observed a similar phenomenon about these glassy things. No? Uh, this time, this is in dysentery bacilli, and observed clear spots on lawn of such cells. No? So, ibig sabihin ng lawn, nagpatubo ka ng evenly uh, growing bacterial cell on a surface of an agar medium. No? It's called a lawn. So, upon noting the lysis of broth cultures of pure dysentery bacilli by filtered emulsion of feces, he immediately realized he was dealing with a bacterial virus. No? So, since the virus was incapable of multiplying except you know, at the expense of living bacteria. No? So, so, he called the, uh, his discovery, this virus, as a bacteriophage, with lit which uh, literally means a bacterium eater, no, or phage, or phage for short. So recently, no, uh, virology became the highlight of the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine with these three guys discovering the hepatitis C virus. No? So these are the highlights of the Nobel Prize. Uh, the method studies of the transfusion, which is associated the uh, uh, hepatitis no, by Harvey at, uh, Alter. And then uh, they demonstrated that an unknown virus was a common cause of chronic hepatitis. No? And then Michael Hutton followed uh, that uh, utilizing an untested strategy to isolate the genome of the new virus that uh, was named hepatitis C virus. So Charles M. Rice then provided the final evidence showing that hepatitis C virus alone could cause hepatitis. Uh, so this is a really great news for uh, virology, uh, having been noticed no, uh, by the Nobel Prize. And of course, in the country, uh, there, there has been much talk about the Virology Institute of the Philippines and, of course, highlighting the importance of Philippine virology and virologists as well. No? So, uh, this was introduced by Senator Laxon but spearheaded by the Department of Science and Technology. So let's now go and move on to the nature and characteristics of viruses. The, distinct, uh, the distinctive features of viruses are the following. No? So they contain a single type of nucleic acid. So it can either be a DNA or a RNA. They contain a protein coat. No? So sometimes it's self-enclosed by an envelope of lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates, and this protein coat will surround the nucleic acid. Next is they multiply inside living cells, no? and this multiplication would require the use of uh, uh, the synthesizing machinery of their host cell. And they cause the synthesis of specialized structures that can transfer the viral nucleic acid to other cells. No? On the other side of this slide, you can see some uh, comparisons of viruses to your typical bacteria and to rickettsias or chlamydias. Uh, so, uh, because rickettsias and chlamydias are also considered as intracellular parasite, so to just to differentiate them, viruses have no plasma membrane, no binary fusion as their uh, mode of reproduction. Uh, they can pass through, both of them can pass through bacteriological filter compared to a typical bacteria, okay? 
uh, although typical bacteria and rickettsias or chlamydias will possess both DNA and RNA, but as mentioned, viruses will only contain a single type of nucleic acid. There are no ATP generating metabolism, neither ribosomes for viruses, as, and uh, they will just utilize these machineries uh, from their host cell. Okay. Viruses are not sensitive to antibiotics. That's why if you have a flu or a cold, we are not obliged or we are not recommended. We are not indicated to take antibiotics. No? But interferons no, uh, will be the most uh, effective way uh, to uh, eliminate viruses versus antibiotics, that is. Let us now compare the naked virus versus the enveloped virus, as you can see here in the figure taken from Brock. No? So the virion no, of any virus, okay, pag, pag uh, sinabi mong virion, ito yung viruses that are outside the host. Okay? Kapag nasa labas sila ng host, ang tawag sa kanila ay virion. Okay? So, a virion of any virus will include a protein shell, okay, ang tawag na capsid, and then the virus genome that, capsid, uh, that the capsid contains. No? So, most bacterial viruses are naked. Ibig sabihin, they have no further layers. Okay? But many animal viruses have an outer uh, layer. This is called the envelope. And the envelope consists of a phospholipid bilayer, which is normally taken from the host cell membrane, in addition to viral proteins. No? So, uh, this uh, adorns no, the outer layer of your uh, viruses. And, and sometimes they say that it, it makes it beautiful. No? So, take note that the envelope normally originates from the host cytoplasmic membrane. Huh? So let's clarify some jargons about the nature of viruses. Again, as I mentioned, when you say virion, it is the extracellular form of the virus, meaning outside the host. No? So when you say genome, this is the sum of the genetic material. When you say infect or infection, this is uh, the time when a virion will gain entry into a suitable host. Okay. The capsid is the protein shell. The nucleocapsid is your inner structure of nucleic acid. This is in combination with your capsid protein. Kesa tinawag na nucleocapsid. Okay? So when you say that a virus is virulent or sometimes referred to as lytic, this is a characteristic of a virus that replicates and then a uh, Ending the replication to destruction of the host cell. No? In contrary, there is a lysogenic virus. It's non uh, no, we, we don't normally call it non virulent because uh, eventually they would be uh, virulent as well. But the difference is that the host cell is not destroyed yet. No? <laughs> Instead, it is genetically altered. Okay, that means the viral genome becomes part of the host genome. No? So they are integrated to the host genome. So sometimes the host genome will have to uh, produce no, certain characteristics that are dictated by the viral genome. As I have mentioned a while ago, viruses can, can contain either DNA or RNA. Okay, so uh, in a eukaryotic system, we know that we have a double-stranded DNA no? and then it will be uh, transcribed into an RNA and translated into proteins. No? So in bacteria too, they have their DNA and they have their plasmids as well. So for viruses, the genomes may be the following. No? So the DNA, the DNA can either be a single-stranded or a double-stranded DNA. 
If it's an RNA, it can either be a single-stranded RNA or a double-stranded RNA. Or, in the case of the retroviruses, they have a single-stranded RNA. And the hepadenoviruses, they have the double-stranded DNA. So, some examples of popular viruses, okay? So, viruses uh, can either be linear or circular uh, genome, no? So, and then when you say it's a single-stranded viral genome, uh, pwede siyang maging plus sense or minus sense. When you say plus sense, it has the exact same base sequence of your viral mRNA. When you say it's minus sense, the complementary in base sequence of viral mRNA is uh, present no so uh, the 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 sense is all about uh, the base sequence that will form the viral proteins how about host range of viruses okay so as uh, uh, virologists uh, usually say that name a host cell and there is a virus that can specifically infect it as its host. So imagine how many cells are there in the whole biological realm. That's the name, the same number of uh, um, viruses uh, that can infect them. No one is to one. So example, influenza. So take note of influenza. Influenza viruses can infect animals. Okay. Uh, however, the range no, of animal hosts that it can infect varies from humans and across mammals, avian, no? uh, kung baga kasama pati yung avians, no? and the likes. No? And among mammals, may variety pa rin siya. No? So, influ uh, viruses no? like the influenza can have a variety of host range. Uh, viruses uh, also can also infect plants. No, uh, they can also like for instance, this is the rice tumor virus. No, uh, a virus can also infect fungi. Okay, uh, and uh, sometimes uh, kagaya nitong Sputnik, the virophage, no, it can infect a virus as well. No, so. The particular host range of a virus is determined by the virus's requirements for its specific attachment to the host cell. So, merong certain compatibilities, mga receptors, no? That it's like a, a lock and key model that only a virus and the host cell would have, no? So, so kung sila ang compatible, ito yung kanyang specific host range, no? So, for the virus to infect the host cell, the outer surface of the virus must be chemically interact with specific receptor sites on the surface of the cell. So, that is a really important key factor uh, for a virus to be able to infect a certain host. So, in terms of size, uh, they also vary and uh, normally we utilize the electron microscope to be able to visualize them. This is an example of a coronavirus replicating as seen under the electron microscope. So, the size would uh, vary from uh, the most tiny bacteriophage to the biggest, no, the Ebola viruses, okay? So, if for reference, uh, here are also the chlamydia bacterium, E. coli, and the human uh, RPC. Okay, so for, so for you to be able to uh, um, imagine no, how tiny the viruses really are. So, in terms of structure, let's get to know the parts of the viruses that would eventually vault in, no, uh, during their life cycle. So viruses are classified by their nucleic acid and by differences in the structures of their coat. No? So for the nucleic acids, if you uh, see here in the particular figure, no? so the andun siya sa loob. No? For instance, this is a viral RNA. Okay. 
and then uh, the capsid and the envelope. So the capsid here is composed of a number of individual protein me molecules, and tawag don ay capsomeres. No? They are single or multiple types of proteins that are arranged in a precise and highly repetitive pattern around the nucleic acid. No? So this is a really very nice uh, rendition of how the capsomeres are arranged uh, surrounding the virus RNA. The envelope uh, is a combination of lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates, mostly derived from the normal host cell components. And in addition, some viruses have spikes. Uh, so they are carbohydrate protein complexes that project from the surface of the envelope. So take note, let's just try to compare the influenza virus and the SARS-CoV-2, uh, the causative agent of COVID-19. Okay, so if you would notice here, okay, uh, so in the middle would be the, the difference in their genome. No? The influenza virus has a segmented genome, ibig sabihin, putol-putol yung kanyang genome, no? That's why uh, mabilis sila mag-mutate. Kaya kayo kumukuha ng influenza shots every year. No? SARS-CoV, on the other hand, uh, has this uh, intricate uh, uh, genome. It's non-segmented. Uh, it's a positive strand, no? unlike your influenza, which is a negative strand, RNA genome. Okay? So far, SARS-CoV-2 is uh, oh, uh, only one strain, no? uh, while for the influenza, we already have four strains with multiple subtypes. Okay? For the uh, outer adornment, both have envelope. No? Uh, for the influenza, the HA and NA, this is your hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase. These are the surface proteins no, that defines the influenza virus. If you want to identify it from samples, you usually look for those proteins. Uh, this is also true for your SARS-CoV-2 virus. The spike protein is normally the protein on the surface that you can utilize to develop either diagnostics or vaccines. For the incubation, uh, roughly the same. Uh, however, uh, for SARS-CoV-2, no, uh, napansin nila that uh, sometimes incubation can be extended up to two weeks. No? For the fatality rate, they say that SARS-CoV-2 is more fatal. No? And then uh, both... Uh, can be managed through supportive care. There are now antiviral medications and vaccines for influenza virus. For SARS-CoV-2, uh, there are no antiviral medication yet that is proven to be effective. However, there are now three vaccine candidates for SARS-CoV-2. You know, so these are from uh, two mRNA candidates, both from Pfizer and Moderna. And we have another non-mRNA vaccine from Astra. So in the other side here of the, of the figure is just to, uh, to give you an idea how these outer proteins you know, okay, can interact with your red blood cells and form uh, reactions like agglutination reactions, which serves to identify the presence of viruses if you submit your blood samples. No? So the general morphology of viruses uh, can be categorized based on capsids architecture. And you can view this architecture by either the electron microscopy or an X-ray crystallography. Okay? So, so far, they have described four uh, capsid architecture, okay? This may be helical uh, or a polyhedral, sometimes referred to the icosahedral, huh? 
the spherical and the complex. No? Sabihin, uh, pag sabi mo complex, wala, hindi siya masyadong defined, no? hindi siya helical, hindi siya polyhedral or sphere. No? And now, uh, here are some of the examples of these capsid uh, architectures. There are also important viral enzymes that needs to be discussed. No? So, uh, as I have mentioned before, that uh, viruses uh, normally utilizes the, the machinery of the host, diba? Right? But you know, sometimes they, uh, they have uh, various enzymes already no? that comes in handy whenever the host doesn't have those enzymes. Kumbaga, may baon sila, no? So, lysozyme like enzyme, these are the important viral enzyme of bacteriophage. So, they are used to make a small hole in the bacterium's peptidoglycan layer to allow nucleic acid from the virion to get into the host cytoplasm. Okay? So, they are produced in the later stage of infection. Also, to lyse naman the host cell so that lalabas sila. No? So, this lysozyme-like enzyme is utilized for them to gain entry and also to serve as a key to the exit, kung baga. No? The next important enzyme will be your neuraminidase, as I have mentioned a while ago for influenza. No? Neuraminidase destroys the glycoproteins and glycolipids of animal cell connective tissue. So in that way, you can liberate the virions and aid in the release from the host. RNA, RNA replicase is another important enzyme. RNA viruses usually carry their own nucleic acid polymerases. No? So they function to replicate the viral RNA genome and produce viral-specific mRNA. Okay, may baon. <laughs> So, reverse transcriptase, on the other hand, is if the viruses needs to make DNA if the RNA template is present. This is, this is um, uh, like for instance, in the case of HIV. So, this is a nice uh, question or thought bubble that you can think about. So, uh, these particular viruses have envelopes, kagaya na influenza. No? So, this one is Ebola on your left, and you have SARS-CoV-2 on the right. So, do you think the viral envelope is a weakness or a strength? So, think about that. If you wish to uh, uh, talk about that, you can, uh, you can uh, always uh, send me a message. Let's now go to the overview of the virus life cycle. So it's funny if, uh, that we tag it as a life cycle, even if they are not really alive. But uh, just for systematic uh, description uh, that it, it goes around as a cycle, they are referred to a life, uh, virus life cycle. But for virologists, we usually term uh, this steps or process as the viral replication cycle. Okay. So for a virus to replicate, it must induce a living host to synthesize all the essential components needed to make new virions. No? So because of this biosynthetic and energy requirement, so the, if, the, if the host cells are dead, so it is not capable of uh, uh, parang mag allow you know, to replicate viruses okay so the host needs to be alive okay so during an active viral infection viral components are assembled into new variants kaya sabi ko kanina na vault in no and uh, after that they will be released from the cell no so these are the five basic steps First is the attachment. The attachment stay, uh, phase will be uh, differentiated in the next slide. No? Then after the attachment, they need to penetrate no, uh, their viral nucleic acids. After that, they will be synthesizing the viral nucleic acid, the capsid, and other important parts. The fourth will be assembly. So, you na yung vault in. No? So, all the important parts that are uh, synthesized separately will now be coming together. And they will be now packaged 
as new viruses. And then after that, the last step will be cell lysis, host cell lysis, and uh, eventually release of the new variants. I mentioned a while ago that there is a major difference between the viral infection. This is the first step between a prokaryotic cell and a viral infection of a eukaryotic cell. Okay. So for bacteria and those archaea, take note that the, only the viral nucleic acid will enter the host cell. Kita nyo dito, no? Ininject lang talaga ni bacteriophage yung kanyang genetic material or genome sa loob ng cell. So they have their specific mechanism as mentioned a while ago, the lysozyme-like enzymes of the bacteriophage. For plant and uh, animal cells, on the other hand, ito yung figure natin on the right, the, it, the entire virion no, is taken up. No? So this is through the process of endocytosis following attachment or adhesion. So let's now try to understand the growth curve, although the viruses is not really growing. No? Uh, compared to your bacterial growth phase, no? So, the, uh, in a virus uh, uh, growth curve, the number of virions released per cell is called the burst size, no? So, this will vary with the particular virus and the particular host cell. And then, they can range from a few to a few thousand. Okay. Duration of the virus replication cycle will also vary. This is from 20 to 60 minutes. This is uh, for many bacterial viruses to 8 or 40 hours, no? of course, for uh, most animal viruses. Okay. So for your thought bubble, compare and contrast this virus replication curve and the bacterial growth curve. Can you notice some similarities or differences? Try to uh, study about it. So if you have questions about this or you wish to discuss this with me, let me know and send me a message. Now there are two types of phages. These are your lytic uh, uh, phages and your lysogenic phage. You know? uh, let's just have first a uh, list of jargons to go with this. So when we say temperate viruses, this these viruses do not kill the host, okay? Kasi sabi natin kanina sa lytic viruses, the last part of the virus life cycle is eventually the lysis of the host cell and release of the new variants, right? Okay, so for the lysogenic pathway, this is the pathway for your temperate viruses, so they do not kill the host. Uh, examples will be your double-stranded DNA bacterial viruses. Uh, although they have a chance or they have a capability of the virulent cycle, they also have, uh, they can also infect their host no? and establish a long-term stable relationship, meaning they just stay there. Okay, so lysogeny means that in this state, most viruses genes are not transcribed and instead, the virus genome is replicated in synchrony with the host uh, chromosome. Okay, so it be known, they will just be passed on to the daughter cells at cell division. Okay, so a lysogen is referred to the cell that will harbor this temperate virus. No? So when you say lysogenic conversion, this is a lysogenic state. Okay, so nandun yung, nandun yung temperate virus inside the cell and then they can confer new genetic properties to the host cell. No? So somehow they can influence. So animal viruses affect on cell. Uh, there are also a variety of effects that uh, an animal virus can do. For instance, um, it can transform cells. So there are some viruses that can uh, enhance or trigger tumor cell division, okay? And then also, uh, virus infection can cause death of the cell and release of the virus. So ito yung lysis 
Okay? So, example, your chicken pox, di ba? So, a disruption of your skin cells. And then, slow release of viruses without causing cell death. This is referred to as your persistent infection. And then, of course, there are viruses that uh, may be present but are not replicating all as well. And this is called the latent infection. Okay? So, example of which will be your HIV or the human immunodeficiency virus which will eventually uh, be developing into the full-blown AIDS, no? so the acute uh, immunodeficiency uh, syndrome. No? So uh, this is the typical life cycle of your HIV. Uh, as an animal virus, it would uh, enter and uncoat uh, the cell and then... Uh, once inside, uh, meron siyang seriling reverse transcriptase uh, enzyme na bit-bit. No? So, meron siyang, uh, the virus can already uh, transform no? yung kanyang genome, which is a single-stranded RNA, into a double-stranded DNA, which can um, easily no? uh, be uh, integrated. To the host genome, no? uh, very wise. No? So after that, it will be transcribed by the host, uh, by the host already, no? and of course, uh, produce several copies of the virus. So here are some examples of uh, animal viruses and their primary effect. Uh, causing certain diseases, so either latent, or persistent. So, can we culture viruses like uh, we culture bacteria? So, first, let us clarify some jargons about uh, culture viruses. No? Uh, first is your lawn. I think I mentioned this earlier. No? Your lawn would mean it's a pure culture of your bacterial host when you spread evenly uh, on a surface of agar plates. When you say plaque, no, so this is a zone of cell lysis observed when a virus infects host cells growing on a flat surface. And titer, this means this is the estimated number of infectious variants present per volume of fluid using a plaque assay. So you usually express this as your plaque forming units. So, so this is similar as your colony forming units, but instead of uh, counting colonies, you uh, count uh, lysis on a plate. You know? So it's like this. Uh, you can uh, create uh, or, or I mean prepare a nutrient agar plate for instance. Then you grow there your host bacterial cell. For instance, E. coli if you wish to grow coliphage or coliphage or the coliform virus. Okay. So after making or preparing your NA, you, you uh, prepare a lawn no, of your host cell E. coli. And then after that, is, uh, you will mix no, in a soft agar. Meaning soft agar, meaning mas maunti yung percent ng agar compared to your nutrient agar plate. You will put there no, the bacterial host cells and the diluted phage suspension. Okay, so you will create there a lawn and then after incubation, you look for clearing zones. No? So you mark clearing zones as depicted in the photo, that will be your plaques or the viruses. No? So you can count how many clearing zones will be like that and then just compute it as your plaque forming units. You can also grow viruses using eggs no or embryonated eggs actually this is i think the first uh ito yung mga pinaka primitive no? <laughs> na way to grow viruses no i i have searched here uh, a way uh, a video no you can click that link that that video will lead you to uh the culturing of viruses using embryonated eggs but nowadays, no, since uh, embryonated eggs are quite tasking, the, we utilized uh, already 
cell cultures. No? Cell cultures, normally, they can grow as monolayer, no? or they can be transformed, yung tinatawag na immortalized. No? So, they keep growing and growing, so non-stop. No? Uh, kagaya ng HeLa cells, no? so they are immortalized cells or transformed cells. So, you can make use of these uh, cell cultures to uh, grow viruses and, of course, experiments on them also. Uh, if you wish to uh, check for antivirals, no? examples nito, ito yun, no? so you have your confluent monolayer of cells like this one, no? uh, I think mas maiintindihan niya dito sa case ng uh, Mad uh, Madariaga virus. No? This Madariaga virus, uh, letter A, yan yung kanyang uh, confluent monolayer host cell niya, no? But once it is infected, you can see the cytopathic effects or yung parang disruption of the cells, no? So that describes lysis of the cells, meaning the, the viruses are replicating. We now move to taxonomy of viruses. Uh, the oldest classification of viruses is based on symptomatology, no? Uh, this is uh, particularly utilized because of diseases you know, that uh, affect the respiratory system. So this system was convenient but uh, not scientifically acceptable you know, because the same virus may cause more than one disease, right? And of course, it would depend on the tissue that it will affect. So in addition, this system is artificially grouped, you know, uh, they, they have this artificial grouping about viruses that don't infect humans. So nowadays, uh, the modern classification of viruses are, are according to how their mRNA is produced. No? So the suffix virus, this is used for the genus. Family names will end in viridae. And the order names will end in ales. No? Example, uh, for your family, herpes viridae, uh, one example of the genus will be your simplex virus. And uh, this is a species containing a, a strain type also. This is the human herpes virus too. So what are strains for viruses? Normally, some of the genetic variants that are present in viruses can produce a new strain. No? What I mean that can produce a new strain, sometimes genetic variations may not lead to a new strain. No? Uh, but of course, in most of the time, they will lead to a new one. No? So like for instance, in the case of uh, influenza, so you can see the, the, the strain evolution. No? From the first uh, Russian pandemic, this is, called, this is caused by the influenza H3N8. The next pandemic was the Spanish pandemic, no? This is the H1N1, okay? So by 1933, the, uh, the circulation of H1N1 was sustained. However, in 1942, B virus was discovered, no? Kasi yung unang influenza virus that was discovered was A, no? So after the discovery of the B virus, uh, the H1N1 was replaced in the circulation. This was by H2N2. And uh, this is through the Asian pandemic in 1957. So normally, uh, this was circulated by wild birds. No? And then by 1968, during the Hong Kong pandemic, the virus was circulated through the pig or the swine. No? So the H2N2 now is being replaced by the H3N2. By 1977, surprisingly, during the children's pandemic, H1N1 recirculated. No? Uh, and then H1N1 was again seen during the 2009 pandemic. And then they say that uh, the pig was the incubation vessel for this one and by that and by 2013 there's another outbreak of influenza 
which is more on birds, no? And this is your H7N9. Uh, this evolution of strains or genetic variations of influenza is highly accounted for its segmented nature of genome, no? So, kita nyo dito sa, sa figure, no? And because of its segmented, it's, there, there is a very high chance for it to uh, exchange or, uh, kumbaga, magpalit-palitan sila, no? So, for instance, in this figure, say, an uh, influenza from a human virus gene pool and then you have uh, an avian virus when they all um, when they will be infecting a swine yung tatlong yon can reassort no so ang tawag doon ay triple re uh, triple reassortment so it's sabihin yung tatlong host uh, influenza na nagvary can reassort with one another and create no create a new genetic variant no, kagaya ng 2009 H1N1 and the 1918 H1N1. Okay? So, the taxonomy of viruses now will be based on the Baltimore classification. Uh, so, here are the, spe the classes. The, the first class is uh, a group containing a double-stranded DNA. Okay? And the here are presented here will be the important genera and their clinical or special features, as well as how uh, if they they are enveloped or non-enveloped. The second class will be the single-stranded DNA. The third will be a double-stranded RNA. Class number four is a single-stranded RNA plus strand. They can either be non-enveloped or enveloped. Class 5 will be a single-stranded RNA minus strand. No, sabi natin kanina, it depends on the sequence of its uh, template, no, whether same or different from the mRNA template. And then class 6 will be your single-stranded RNA um, produced DNA. Okay, this is for your retroviridae. And then the double-stranded DNA that utilizes Reverse transcriptase, this will be your hepadnaviridae or the hepatitis v, uh, B viruses. Notice that in the tables, there are some chapters that uh, you are requested to refer to if you wish to study further about the representative viral family uh, indicated here. You can go to the chapters. These are from Tortora 13th edition. For the biosynthesis of DNA and RNA, uh, when you compare several viruses, so so some uh, some viruses can just uh, you know transcribe viral DNA in the neck the nucleus based uh, using the cellular enzyme. You know? However, for other types of viral nucleic acid, there are some special features or special mechanisms listed here. Okay. There's also the so-called human virome, sa so, pinakilala ko kayo before, sa so, microbiome, which is consist of your uh, bacteria and fungi, no? and even viruses. So, if you wish just to study the viruses inside a healthy human, it's called the human virome. You can utilize also sequencing uh, methodologies for this one. Now, let's go to the plant viruses. The plant viruses are uh, the following, no? And uh, take note that for plant viruses, you need a vector, no? So, this particular vector will help transmit the viruses. Normally, mga insecto to mga to, no? So, when the insect will bite into the leaves, for instance, or fruit or stem of the plants, they will be inoculating, no? itong mga viruses na ito. Now, let's go to the sub-viral agents. The first sub-viral agent will be your viroid. Uh, viroids are, no are normally naked RNA. No? Uh, it's uh, explicitly shown here in figure 10.31 from Tortora. It's just a single-stranded circular RNA. Yeah, seemingly very harmless, no? <laughs> 
However, no, uh, once uh, it uh, enters a plant cell, uh, it becomes infectious. No? So, uh, example of a disease that can be caused by viroids will be your potato spindle, spindle tuber viride. No? So, there is also the so-called virusoids. They are actually viroids, but instead of being naked, they are enclosed in a protein coat. Okay, so formerly they are called satellite RNAs. Uh, they are covalently closed circular infectious single-stranded RNAs. They encode one or more gene products and they require a helper virus for replication. So this is very unique for virusoids. No? So example, they can, they can utilize the help of a human hepatitis D virus. Uh, I mean, uh, the human hepatitis D virus, this is an example of a virusoid, and they require human hepatitis B virus for it to replicate. Uh -huh. so this is an example of a typical replication uh, of uh, virusoids that uh, requires the help of the helper virus to enter a host cell and replicate. So for another subviral agent would be your prions. Uh, example of prions would be your scrapey and uh, mad cow disease no? in uh, cattle. Instead of RNA, prions are said to be proteins. No? So they are proteins and uh, they are produced by uh, cells. Uh, and secreted to the surface. No? And uh, ang, ang, maganda, ang interesting dito sa prions is that uh, normal prions, no? normal prions and the pathogenic prions will have a different uh, protein configuration. No? But right now, uh, what, what triggers the misfolding or the, or the changing of this configuration is not yet available. No? So, hindi nila alam pa paano nagiging suddenly pathogenic ang isang harmless protein. No? Okay, so for your self-directed learning, uh, I would like you to imagine that you are a researcher at a pharmaceutical company charged with developing uh, new drugs in charge no? of uh, with developing new drugs against human RNA viral pathogens. So, bakit napili tong human RNA viral pathogens? Kasi so far, most uh, most of the outbreaks and pandemics are caused by RNA viral pathogens. Like for for instance, right now we are a pan we are in a pandemic caused by an RNA virus. So, can you describe at least two types of drugs that you might want to pursue? or invent no, or discover what class of virus uh, that they would affect and why do you feel that those drugs that you are thinking would not harm the patient, okay? So if you have any questions about this lecture, I would encourage you to uh, send me an email, an inbox, for instance, for a consultation. References, if you would like to further read about virology, you can use Introduction to Modern Virology by DMOC, Easton and Leopard, Microbiology and Introduction by Tortora, Chapter 13, and Brock Biology of Microorganisms, Chapter 8 and 10. So this will be the last slide. Thank you very much and enjoy viruses.